Hello, welcome to my review for Unsane, the latest film from Steven Soderbergh, who I thought retired a few years ago. It's, it's funny how the filmmaking world seems to be taking its cues from the wrestling world. You know, Kevin Smith, I'm retired from making movies, makes a few more movies. You know, Steven Soderbergh, I'm retired from making movies, makes a few more movies. I ain't complaining. You know, Quentin Tarantino, my 10th movie, I'm retiring, you know. It, it just seems like a weird, weird thing to me. But, again, I'm happy that he's continued to make films. I thought Logan Lucky was, was so much fun last year. This one I only heard about a week or so before it was coming out. I saw a preview screening of it, so I guess I could have gotten up a, an early-ish review, but I, I didn't have the time. I, I decided to focus that on Isle of Dogs, I think. But Unsane follows a young woman called Sawyer, which is an unusual name, but I liked that who is living, I forget where she's living, it's in America, obviously, it's an America set film, but she's moved like to a whole other state. Um, she's kind of starting a new, new life and a new job, but she's, she's kind of a little bit unhinged. She had a stalker, and she's trying to move past that, uh, but she's still got this kind of lingering um, you know, trauma over it, basically. So she goes to see a psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist listens, and, you know, okay, we'll, we'll see you next week. So, um, you know, she signs some papers, you know, just legal stuff, and she's about to leave the, 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 the facility, the hospital, and they pull her into a side room, and they ask her to strip her clothes off and to give her all the contents of, you know, her bag, and she realizes slowly but surely that she has actually signed herself in to a voluntary uh, confinement in, you know, an asylum, basically, within the hospital. So it's this weird thing where she's been basically tricked, into committing herself, and so, you know, she obviously she's like, well, this is ridiculous, I'll, I'll call the police, and they're like, do you know how many people call the police from, from this place, you know, they don't take it seriously. So she's basically, you know, become entrapped into this situation, and she is a little bit unhinged, as I said. So what I loved about this film was that as she finds herself being drawn deeper and deeper into, okay, now you've got to stay here for seven days, you know, then she's starting to question, wait, am I really going mad? Like, am I here for a reason? And just that horrifying idea of an institution, of a system, saying, you are this, uh, and you must do this, to the point where someone's like, I'm not, I, I know that's not me, I don't need to be here. And the system's like, yes, you do. And then that person is like, maybe I am. You know, that kind of, you know, peer pressure on like a mass scale, you know, wouldn't even be peer pressure because it's someone who's placed in a position above you where it's like, you know, we are, you know, the people who know these kinds of things and you definitely need to be here. And she begins to learn that maybe this is actually an insurance scam, that they need a certain amount of people to be in certain amount of beds to kind of get money from her insurance company and so on to keep the place running. Uh, so she's got to try and get out of this place, basically. But then she notices that one of the wardens is the guy who was stalking her from hundreds of miles away. So she loses her shit, makes her look even more crazy, and then she starts to question, is it the guy? And I love films like this where, you know, the, the, the kind of sanity of the, the person in question, like the main character of the film, is brought into question, and you, then you begin to question it. Because for the, for the most part, I was like, wow, she needs to get out of this situation, it's horrible. But then I was like, wait, maybe she is really going crazy, or is she? I don't know. Uh, obviously, it gets revealed maybe halfway through the film what's really going on. But I, I love it when it isn't black and white, it isn't clear cut, and you can kind of suspend your disbelief and go along with, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. I really love that. This film was uh, shot on iPhones. I think it was probably widely publicized. I mean, I knew before going to see it, at least. And I saw Sean Baker's film, was it Tangerine, from a couple of years ago, shot on iPhones. I really was impressed by it. I didn't love the film, but I, I thought it was really good. It's an interesting thing where I don't know whether Steven Soderbergh was like, I want to try and make this film with an iPhone, because it's going to save so much money from hiring cameras and things like that, or whether it was, I want to see if I can make a movie with an iPhone. I want to go back to basics. I don't know, maybe it was freedom of putting the camera in, in certain places, I don't know. And to be honest, I haven't looked at, up interviews and I haven't delved into where, I could probably find out if I wanted to. But just based on going into the film, knowing it was shot on phones, uh, you know, I was wondering what, why was he doing this? And to be honest, the beginning of the film felt a little bit amateurish, just, just in terms of like the, the angles and also the way it looks. And, and this is a really, it might be personal to me because I'm the kind of person who goes over someone's house and I see they've got motion smoothing on their TV and I want to just bite my fist off, you know. I get very particular about the way film looks, that 24 frames per second look. 
is you know it's, it's a certain kind of style that we've all grown up with in movies where it doesn't look like real life completely because it's 24 frames a second we can process more than that you know I, I guess if you were to break down what the eye can perceive uh, and then we have like the 60 frames per second which looks much more like you know reality to, to you know if you want to use that term and the motion smoothing thing and everything like that and obviously shooting on a phone it's video it's not film and so you can just tell you know, the, the the best way I can say is that if you look at a movie, it looks like a movie. If you film something on your camcorder, it looks like something you filmed. It doesn't look like a movie from the way the image moves and just the... Anyway, so for me personally, seeing that it was shot on a phone, I could tell. And so it, it made it feel more real, which might have been an intention as well. And I was drawn more into the into that side of it. And I think the best compliment I can pay to the way Unsane was filmed is that by the 20 30 minute mark i wasn't thinking about the fact it was shot on a phone whatsoever it shot well um you know uh, there's some interesting stuff done with the camera but not too much you know it it just uh, there's a claustrophobia to some of it at times but for the most part i don't really feel like there'd be like you know every 10 15 minutes I go oh that this is actually shot on a phone this is really cool kind of tracking shot they've got going on there you know but apart from that it really didn't factor into my um you know, enjoyment of the film too much. So it's not something where I was like, oh, it's a gimmick, you know. Hey, it was just a different way to do a film, and, uh, you know, I didn't mind it, didn't feel like it was forcing this gimmick onto me. I was just wrapped up in the story, in Sawyer's kind of odyssey of trying to get out of this place, and I loved how it just felt more real. It didn't feel like a over-the-top caricature. It didn't feel like, a, you know, like, a, I don't know, like a, like a movie uh, asylum, I suppose that there was an element of plausibility to it that made it all the more unsettling and the second half of the film was just absolutely ratcheting up the tension to me I was so in invested so emotionally engaged I thought it was a, a really really good even great thriller as far as a thriller goes I think this is one of the one of the better ones I've seen over the past couple of years not the best but you know it's up there it's certainly in the conversation I love really well done thrillers and I would put that this film amongst that kind of category of just a, just a really damn good thriller that um, just really drew me in. And I love the performance from Claire Foy, I believe, British actress who played Sawyer. Really, really good. And the other, you know, uh, not really many actors I recognize in the film, but they all did. Oh, there was Juno Temple I recognize. Um, but apart from that, you know, I really enjoyed the, the various characters in the hospital and the parts they had to play and so on. And, uh, you know, it gets dark, as you would expect, but uh, I just really had a great time with this film and I would definitely watch it again and again. Can't wait to show it to Connie who I know loves these kinds of thriller movies so yeah for me Unsane really really good. I highly recommend going to see it if you've heard of it and were on the fence or if you hadn't heard of it I'd definitely go and give it a look if you like a really well done thriller and that's pretty much all I have to say so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you're all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and calling into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...